the first one I am uh, showing you the gross of a atherosclerotic plaque. This is the cut suction of an iota and uh, you can see numerous plaques are there. This is one plaque, the other one is over here, this is another one. These all raised surfaces are nothing but uh, atherosclerotic plaques. This other one on the side is showing a, calcificate, uh, showing a calcified ulcerated plaque, hence a complicated lesion. As you can see, over here the plaque is ulcerated and also hemorrhage is seen. Uh, the calcified lesions are mostly the one which are chalky white in appearance and characteristic, characteristically when you cut these lesions then you will have a very uh, gritty sensation which is a characteristic of calcified plaques. Uh, now atherosclerosis is not only intracellular accumulation, it is associated with both intracellular as well as extracellular accumulation that we will see in the microscopic slides. First, the complications of atherosclerosis, calcification, ulceration, thrombosis, aneurysm and hemorrhage are the common complications of atherosclerosis. Now, we will just have a look at the microscopy. This is a microscopic picture of atherosclerotic plaque. Here you will uh, be able to appreciate both the intracellular and extracellular accumulation of lipid. Uh, the, here as you can see these are the lipid laden foamy macrophages. Foamy macrophages are nothing but the macrophages which have engulfed the fat droplets. So uh, these are the macrophages. I will just show you one. This is the circumference, this is the uh, boundary of the macrophage and inside you can see this foamy appearance which is due to the engulfment of the fat droplets. Uh, hence we call them as foamy macrophages. So this is the intracellular accumulation of lipid and the extracellular accumulation leads to the formation of these needle shaped cholesterol cliffs. So uh, hence they are both intra and extracellular accumulations. This is a low power view of the artery. This is the entire thickness. Uh, this, the, this is the entire thickness of the arterial wall. And here you can see numerous needle shaped cliffs, which are the cholesterol cliffs. Next, we come to the brown atrophy of heart. As you know, atrophy is a decrease in the size of the organ due to decrease in the number of cells and also decrease in the size of the cells. Uh, now, uh, size is a very relative term. So, how do you appreciate the decrease in the size that is atrophy? In this case, you will be able to see that the heart vessels have become very tortuous. So, this is a very important sign indicating that the heart is actually atrophied because of which the veins overlying it are appearing tortuous. And also the distinct brown color of the heart which appears due to the lipofuscin pigment. In the next slide, we see, will see the microscopy. Here is a microscopy. These are all the cardiac muscle fibers which are showing a perinuclear, uh, some perinuclear pigmentation. These pigments are nothing but the lipofuscin granules. The lipofuscin granules have also been called as a wear and tear pigment. The, uh, these, uh, this kind of pigment is, so has been associated with old age and malnutrition and occur due to uh, the atrophic changes in the organ. The major reason, the major reason behind the, this kind of pigmentation is the peroxidation of lipids. Uh, and uh, you might be able to recall that peroxidation of lipids is associated with aging as well as malnutrition. So this uh, deposition of perinuclear golden brown pigment gives rise to the overall brown appearance of the organ. Hence, we call it as a brown atrophy of heart, both brown in color and the size is decreased. Next, I uh, will uh, have a look at calcification. This is again a cut section of the artery. This is a whole cross section of an artery and over here you can see a blue patch of granular amorphous substance which is nothing but calcium. Uh, now, uh, calcification can be both dystrophic and metastatic. The examples of dystrophic calcification, the most important is heart valves and rheumatic heart disease. Uh, that is uh, when the calcium deposits in dead and degenerated tissue. The other type is a metastatic one where deposition of calcium occurs when the levels of calcium are very high in the uh, blood. In the blood. Examples of metastatic calcification of interstitial tissue of gastric mucosa, kidney, lungs, systemic artery and pulmonary veins. These are sites which are which have shown uh, metastatic calcification. Uh, now special stain for calcium is a uh, von Cosa stain. This is an important MCQ. Next we come to necrosis. Necrosis as you are aware are the uh, the three main types coagulative necrosis, liquefactive necrosis and cages necrosis. I will just show you the uh, slides of these uh, three main types. The first one I'll be I'm showing you the 
इन्फेक्टेड एरियाज द इन्फेक्ट एरियाज एज यू आर अवेयर आर एसोसिएटेड विद कोगुलेटिव नेक्रोसिस एक्सेप्ट फॉर द क्लासिकल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ब्रेन विच विच कैरेक्टराइज द लिक्विफेक्टिव नेक्रोसिस सो ह्यूर आई हैव शोन यू टू ऑर्गन्स दिस इज द हार्ट एंड दिस इज द किडनी द हार्ट हैज बीन कट ट्रांसवर्सली दिस इज द इंटरवेंट्रिकुलर सिप्टम दिस इज द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल एंड दिस इज द राइट वेंट्रिकल and over here in the left ventricular wall you can see the white healed area of infarct so this infarct this is a myocardial infarct on gross and when you go on the microscopy you will find coagulative necrosis here this is a cut section of the kidney the kidney over here is showing a wedge shaped infarct now you must know that solid organs typically show a wedge shaped infarct the reason behind is that the infarct occurs due to uh some obstruction in the terminal arteries uh, might be the terminal artery might be coursing up till here and then some occlusion occurred and then the entire area which was being supplied by that artery undergoes necrosis hence the uh, necrosis in solid organs are mostly wedge shaped with the base ba with the base of the wedge lying towards the base of the organ and uh, such infarcted areas are also surrounded by a zone of hyperemia you know uh, you will also find a zone of hyperemia in case of uh, abscesses abscesses is also surrounded by a zone of hyperemia and the reason behind is that both in the cases of infarct and in abscesses since the body is trying to heal the injury there is an increased vascular supply so this uh, increase in the vascular supply leads to a zone of hyperemia around the area of infarct or the area of abscess now uh, next we will go to the microscopy Uh, this is a microscopy of the same infarcted area the coagulative necrosis seen in myocardial infarction as you can see uh, the coagulative necrosis is characterized by the typical feature of preservation of architecture of the heart of the cells so as you can see the all of the you can appreciate that these are all cardiac muscle fibers the outlines are easily visible but uh, you'll also observe that the nuclei are lost you can just uh, see one nuclei over here and one over here the rest of the muscles are not showing nuclei so this loss of nuclei is a characteristic feature of coagulative necrosis along with preservation of the architecture of the cells so um, this is how you can differentiate coagulative necrosis from other types of necrosis 